Hey guys, welcome to another episode on TFB TV. Today we have some snow capped mountains in the background, which are pretty cool. Um, but we're going to be looking at the Ultimax 2000 today. More with stuff with Scott with Machine Gun Dad. Make sure to check out his channel. We also want to give out a big shout out to Ventura Munitions, and we want to thank our supporters for helping us with the channel so far. So I hope you enjoy this episode. Tashakor, Khodafas. Hey guys, welcome to another episode on the show. Today here we're with Scott with his Class 3 gun collection and thank you very much for coming on the show again, Scott. We really appreciate it. Thanks. So today we're going to be looking at the Ultimax 2000. It was a prototype that came into the United States and it improved on a lot of what we saw earlier with last week's episode on the Mark II. So if you could please take us away on what did the, what did the Ultimax 2000 prototype apparently get right when it came to a lot of the issues that a very historical, very interesting light machine gun in its own right, the Mark II Ultimax, you know, what did it get right with the, the prototype that actually never saw much service across the world? When the uh, Mark II came in, or came out, there were some glaring features which we discussed. One was the buttstock, and that was changed immediately to Mark III. And the other was the quick change barrel, and that was, again was changed in the Mark III. But the problem is when the Mark III was brought into this country by the company I worked for, and their failure was in the magazines. The magazine design with the putting punching holes in the side of the standard magazine just wouldn't work, just simply doesn't hold up. So the company I worked for got hold of, was working directly with Charter Industries, and they, and they sent suggestions. Hence, we got this is called the, uh, it's actually papered as an Ultimac 2000. Uh, we had two of them, and uh, this is one of them. And they were literally Mark III's that were pulled off the line. There's no special serial numbers. This one, the serial number is in the uh, 100,000 range. So literally, they just took a Mark III off the line and they put requests in that we wanted or we had asked for. And they didn't do everything right, um, to be truthful. They screwed a few things up, but they got most of it right. What they did do, uh, which was glaring, is first of all, put a rail on it. We talked about this in the Mark II. The way this square receiver is, the um, bolt carrier and a bolt slide back and forth in the top of the gun. If you put screws or something in there, you're gonna interfere with the, the travel space for the gun, so um, the bolt. So they welded everything on. And they did a pretty eh, average job. They didn't really do a nice job. Um, you can see that this was simply, they took a production gun and they, they tweaked it for our, for our requests. They did away with the machine gun sight that goes out to 1,200 meters. I don't know why they had that on there in the first place, but they did away with that. They changed the buttstock. They went to a double push pin buttstock, which they retained on the, on the 2000, but the 2000s came into the country with a side-floating paratrooper stock. Now, none of the Ultimaxes we had, and we had quite a few of them, both directly from Singapore and some were imported from Europe, from Croatia, the 2s and the 3s, had a folding buttstock. Only the 2000s had the folding buttstock. On the gas system, on the Mark III and the, and the 2000s, they actually make the gas system that comes apart now, and it is marked in increments of one, two, and three, so you know, low, medium, and high. The quick change barrel system is, is phenomenal. It works very, very well. Um, it's simply a matter of squeezing the trigger and turning the barrel, and it slides right out the front. It's a protrusion right in front of the front grip that it, you, when you're holding the front grip, you can squeeze it like your finger, like a, like a trigger, and it, it works very well. And the other thing is, um, if you compare the two side by side, they increase the grip sizes for American hands. So the front grip's uh, got uh, four grooves, whereas the Mark II only had two, and this grip is very reminiscent of a saw grip. One other thing, which they did on the Mark III too, is they changed the caulking handle to, it's a squeeze caulking handle instead of a rotating, it's dummy proof. In other words, you, by pulling it back, you're automatically unlocking it. You don't have to make a conscious effort to turn it, so you're not gonna shear that pin off, it's not gonna fail. They got all that right. And the fact that they, it uses M16 standard, unmodified M16, now they put a magwell on it, they got that right. None of the original drums or magazine, well, they, Original magazines are still in 16 mags, they'll work, but the original drums don't work. So, but a beta mag will work. A Magpul D60 mag will definitely work. What they did wrong was they were in such a hurry to get this gun to us that they put a cross bolt safety in it. And they didn't put a D10 in it. So 
simply by putting your hand up like you know you're taught you know, even to release a magazine you're going to turn the safety on you're going to turn the safety on the gun's not going to be ready to fire and it's 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 actually quite annoying if you if you're if you're like me and you don't put your finger alongside in the trigger guard and I, I usually run mine up a little bit. I have constantly knocked it off fire on the safe when I'm on the range. And because there's no detent in it, There's right? no positive lock. Whereas the Mark II was absolutely positive. that They rotated. This one, it doesn't rotate. And that is a design flaw. The folding stock is also not exactly the best design because if you look at the gun and when you pan back the gun, the folding stock drops away. Whereas the gun with the factory stock is a straight line gun. I don't know why they did that. The Paris stock, the way it folds, it, it collapses like a, a Galil or an FN Paris stock. You pull the stock down and it rotates to the side. And I don't know why, but it folds up. And, it, and directly in line of where the, the charging, charging handle, handle is. is. Now yeah. they, they give you a gap so you can clear it, but. I would have made the peristock fold to the other side. They apparently thought it was good this way. Again, I think this was an afterthought. I think this was basically, look, we cobbled together something quick to get to the American market to show as, like, this is what we can do. I don't know if it was ever adopted. And if you look at the side of this gun where the magwell is, you can see where there are hand grind marks and weld marks where they put this together in a tool room. Mm -hmm. Even though this one has the paratrooper stock, I don't like the paratrooper stock. Um, it's not as comfortable to shoot. The standard Mark III hollow plastic stock, which is an excellent stock. You push two pins. It's almost like t uh, taking the upper off an M16. You literally push two pins and you slide it right on. And it's uh, very light, very durable. And it's just nice straight pull and very comfortable to shoot. This gun has a paratrooper um, short barrel on it. But the standard saw barrel is 20 inches long. It reminded me of an AUG barrel. AUG, okay. Because an AUG barrel has the same interrupted threads on the barrel, and the bolt doesn't lock into the barrel. It locks into the trunnion, and the trunnion lock, and this locks into the trunnion. That's what it reminded me of. Um, and on the paratrooper barrels, the charging handle folds, unlike the Mark II, which doesn't fold. And now the um, Full length saw barrels, the, bar uh, the charging handle doesn't fold either. Man, that's just unfair. <laughs>